Hello and welcome to CED Mosba Electric's online video series. Today we're going to cover uh, motion servo setup and tuningless startup in Studio 5000. So for this video, we're going to be using uh, the L1769 L36ERM. Um, so over over Ethernet to a Kinetix 5700 with the with the power supply. And then out of that, we're going to be tuning this external motor over here. Okay, so here we are in Logix. We have a, a project started with our 1769L36ERM. Uh, we have no, we have yet to add the drive. So that's what we're going to do first. So just like adding an I/O module, or, or if you go to our PowerFlex 525 demo or video on YouTube. We do this for the uh, speed controlling drives, the VFDs. So we're just going to click new module. The first thing we have to add, so the, the, the Kinetics 5700s have a DC power supply. So in this case we're using the 2198P031. So we're going to add that first. And we're going to call that K5700 power supply. We have to give it an IP address. In this case, we're dot thirty. Um, this is okay here, um, and we're going to hit OK on that. Next thing we're going to do is close that. We're going to bring up the properties for that power supply. And down here under associated access, we have none. You do have to actually create an access for the power supply, even though there's not a physical access out in the world. So we're going to click new access and call it Kinetics 5700 power access. It's a SIP drive, um, and then we're going to open the access configuration after we create it. And since we're not controlling the actual position of a physical access, we're going to change this to converter only. We're going to assign it to our motion group, and we're going to tell it it's connected to that drive. Hit apply, and we're good. So we're good with that one. Next thing, we're going to come back down to our Ethernet, right click, new module. And the drive we have is a 2198D006 ERS4. So the ERS4 has either the hardwired safety or the network safety, whereas the ERS3 is only a hardwired safety. So we're going to create that. And we're going to name that Kinetics 5700. And this is a dual axis drive, so we're just going to call it dual. 31. Next thing we need to change in our situation, we're not using network safety. So we're going to come down and change this to hardwired safety and hit OK. And we're going to create that. Close this and then reopen up the properties once again. And again, we're going to come down to associated axes. You can see that we have, can do two physical axes on this. There's actually four. Uh, two of them, axis two and axis four, are for feedback only. So for axis one, we're going to create a new axis. And motion group. And then our motor. So we have the physical motor here with us in our demo box. And it is a BPL. It's, a, it's this model with a W. Uh, then you could come down, you could change your scaling units, things like that. We're going to leave everything at a default for now, and we're just going to hit apply and OK to leave that out. And then it brings us back here, and our axis three, that would be our second physical axis. So we're going to create one there. Position loop again, motion group, tie it to our drive. And see how it changed it to axis number two, but axis number two is feedback only. So we want to change that to axis three and make this a position loop. Come down to the motor. And now this one's a slightly different motor, so let me just check here. It's the P. It's 
guy. So you can see the advantage here. Uh, you don't have to know any of this information. This is since it's a Rockwell servo, it all populates automatically. Um, used to be you had to come in and you had to put all the motor information in manually and, and do a lot of calculations. Everything loads for you and gets you very close to that. So now we're set up and we're ready to download. Let me just apply this and hit OK. And we're going to go ahead and download this to the controller. Uh, one thing that uh, we forgot to mention before downloading, uh, there's a couple things that we need to change. The first thing is in your controller, so your controller properties here, uh, you need to go to the date and time, and you need to enable this time synchronization. You don't need to do this for any motion um, application that you're doing, integrated motion. Uh, so you would enable this, and that will allow the controller to be the time master. Without that, you would end up getting a fault on the drives when you go online that says there's no time ma master enabled. So that's one thing we need to remember to do. The next thing, uh, and this is for the demo more than anything, but in the drives, uh, the digital inputs. By default on the power supply, the digital input one is set to an enable. Uh, that's not wired in our drive, so we're, or our demo box we have here, so I'm going to make that unassigned. And then also in the drive, under the digital inputs, same thing here. These aren't wired in our demo here, so I'm going to make them all unassigned. And now we are ready to download, so let's go ahead and do that. So here we are, we're downloaded to our controller, we're in remote, or we're in run mode over here. Uh, we have no errors on our drives, so we did everything right, because we're smart, good controls engineers. But now what we're going to do, the next step would be to tune the motor um, and get everything set up. So let's open up our Axis 2, that's our external motor over here. And just to see what we get when we before we tune, Let's go ahead and make this loud. So that's obviously not what we wanted. So let's disable our motion servo, turn it off. And so from here, we could run an auto tune and then come in and you know mess with our loop gains and things like that to try to get this tuned the way we want it. And then anytime there's a change in the mechanical side of things as, as belts wear, chains wear, uh, you're going to have to come in and retune the motor. So Rockwell has built this nice tool called Load Observer, which will track those changes and tune the motor on the fly continuously. So allowing you to, act, to start up these motors without ever having to tune them. So online, there is this document. Uh, this is a quick start guide for tuning list features for 5500, 5700. Um, the document number is at the bottom here. It's publication. You can type this into Google, Google and this will come up. Uh, we'll also put a link in the comment section of this video. So this is what we're going to step through to set this up. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come to the auto-tune and we're going to change this to a custom and uncheck the torque low-pass filter. Okay, and from there we're going to go to our load over here on the left-hand side and under load observer we're going to enable load observer with velocity estimate and make sure that this is set to zero initially and also under the load you want to make sure that the load ratio is set to zero hit apply there so that's it that's that's load observer so now what we're going to do let's open up our manual controls here again and we're going to hit this button So that sound that we got, a little more high pitched than the other uh, uh, grinding sound, um, and that's because of the compliance in this machine is that it's, there's a, a resonant feet, uh, frequency in this, um, this axis. So the next step in this is to uh, set up the tracking notch filter. Normally what you would have to do here is, is pull out a phone or some sort of a sound measuring device, find out what that frequency was, 
go into your um, setup here and you would need to um, put a notch filter at that frequency to get rid of it and then that would take care of you. But anytime, again, any changes in the mechanical design or mechanical system, you'd have to change that notch filter. So under compliance, that's where our notch filter is normally set up. We're just going to do this adaptive tuning and we're going to turn on our tracking notch filter. Um, and then down here under the drive parameters, we need to find the torque notch filter frequency estimate. Torque notch filter frequency estimate. We need to check that box and the magnitude estimate. And so, so they, these two parameters will, will be scanned e each cycle off of the drive. And we're going to hit apply on that and bring up our manual tune and select our motion servo on and Well, that was a lot better. What that was is, so you heard the uh, resonant frequency come in and then the track filter, um, or the notch filter, track it, hear it, and then filter it out. And then we were smooth sailing from there. So now if we, we can start up our servo and run it, and it's gonna continuously tune, and then over time it's gonna get a nice smooth motion to it. So there you go. That's how you use the tuningless startup of the Kinetics 5500, in this case, Kinetics 5700. Once again, thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out future and current videos by subscribing to CED Mosbaugh Electric Supply on YouTube or visiting www.mosbaugh.com media. Thanks again.